what's going on everybody it's your favorite auntie mo we are back baby for another episode review of the real black china this is season one episode three guess who's coming to dinner <laughs> before we get into the review if you have not done so just yet go ahead and subscribe to my channel let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or thumbs down and hit the notification button so you will know whenever i upload new content y'all i'm gonna need somebody to get on the phone call dr phil Ianla. Hell, Donahue, Ricky Lake, somebody. Let them know they got some new customers on their hand. I said it on the last uh, two reviews, and I'm going to say it on this one. If you don't cherish the relationship that you got with your mama, bitch, watch this show. Watch The Real Black China and see the relationship between Tonio and Angela Renee White. And, baby, you're going to realize what you got going on with your mama ain't shit. Y'all, let's go ahead and get right on into this review. All right, y'all, so it's picking up where the episode ended the last time, right? It's Tonio, Ashton, and Treasure. They all in the park because, you remember, Tonio wanted to meet up in the park to talk because, you know, it was space and opportunity is what she say, right? And so her and Treasure going back and forth. Tony and Treasure face, Treasure and Tony face. Tony like, bitch, fuck you, eat a dick. Treasure like, bitch, fuck you, you suck a dick, right? For whatever reason, Tonio feels like Treasure is a bad energy in China's life. She's saying that it's because of, because of Treasure that she doesn't have a good relationship with her daughter. And Treasure trying to get her to realize, no, bitch, it's because of the crazy shit that you do and the fact that you all on social media airing out everybody's goddamn um, business and all of her business. And you feel like you can only communicate, you can only communicate with her through social media. It's the reason why y'all into it right now it don't have shit to do with me and like um treasure tried to tell her like look here i'm not with her every day i'm with her like a couple of days out the week couple of days out the month so don't try to say that i'm the reason why you and your daughter ain't got no good relationship you the reason why y'all relationship is fucked up treasure even said on her green screen because tony is like in her face fuck you bitch i like like girl she said it before I, I was thinking it. And then Treasure said it. Treasure was like, you know what I'm saying? I know this is my homegirl mama, but the way she coming at me, it's getting real hard for me to differentiate her and a regular bitch up on the street. I mean, they going at it. They going at it to the point to where the producers had to step in. Tonio taking her jacket off and shit like she getting real bad about it. So the producers had to step in. Producers getting um Tonio. Ashton is getting treasure. And treasure like, look here, I got my hands behind my back. In other words, that was called for her to say, I'm waiting on that bitch to swing on me first because as soon as she do, I'm finna mop the floor with her goddamn ass. So... The producers break it up or whatever, right? And so later on, after they've calmed down, Tony actually apologizes. Now, first off, first off, Treasure apologizes. Now, let me get this to Treasure. Treasure handled the situation like a real ass, calm ass female. Because had that been Monique circa 9-9 uh, to the 2000s, the fact that she my home girl mama would have went all out the goddamn window. Me and that bitch would have been moving furniture around. But Treasure handled that real grown woman like. She was like, look, you my home girls, you my best friend's mama. I don't want no problems with me and you. I want whatever me and you got to be resolved so that you and China can get back on the same page. That's all I want. I don't want no problems. Whatever situation me and you got, I apologize on my behalf. Now, she didn't have to apologize. Because quite honestly, I don't feel like she did a goddamn thing wrong. But treasure, treasure is somebody we should all strive to be like one day. We should all strive to have that kind of patience. You know, I strive to have that kind of patience. Because sometimes I want to Nancy Kerrigan, a couple of bitches, just knock them off at the knees, but you can't do that. You got to take the high road and you got to apologize sometimes. And so I'm going to follow Treasure's lead. I got to keep that in the back of my mind. Back here, don't Nancy Kerrigan a bitch. Just take the high road. Mode ain't worth it. They won't let you have your nails and your weave in prison, so don't even do it. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to do that. 
So she apologizes to Tony. And surprisingly, Tony apologizes back to her. She tells her that she loves her and that she loves her kids and that she does want to try to get together with China and hopefully make their relationship work. So they hug it out, y'all. Hopefully, you know what I'm saying? Shit can stay cordial, but um. Y'all know Tony a batshit crazy, so it's only a matter of time. So, Ashton and China are back at China's house, right? They're boxing up orders for China's um, company that she got, some online boutique. And she has a storefront that's in L.A. as well. But in the meantime, she said the storefront is closed down, so her and Ashton like boxing up shit to send out to customers or whatever, right? So, Treasure comes in. Treasure comes over. Treasure comes in. She look cute, too. God, I like Treasure. She had a little blonde faux flo locks with a little... Rastafarian shit on. She was looking all cute, body yaddy yaddy and all of that. But um, Treasure wants to talk. Uh, she wants to talk to China and just you know chop it up with her, see where her mind is, and really to let her know you know she apologizes for how things went with her and her mother, and she doesn't want China to be pissed off at her or to feel some type of way with her because her and her mom got into it. But China completely understands. She like bitch. I could have told you that. Like, if I can't get through to my mama, you know, hey, good luck and kudos to you for trying. But, bitch, I, you know what I'm saying? I could have told you we wasn't going to get nowhere with that hoe. But, you know what I'm saying? Ashton, more than anything, is the one that really is pushing China to have a relationship with her mom. Treasure could really care one way or the other. I think the only reason why she pushing to do it, you know what I'm saying? All of this is with production. You know, she got to get a check. She got to get a point out this bitch. So she got to act like she care. But really, I really don't think Treasure give a damn either way if China has a relationship with her mom or not. It's more or less Ashton, who's a personal assistant, who is really pushing the idea of her having a relationship with her mom. So China is, you know, she's she's up for, you know, meeting with her mom again for the umpteenth time, trying to have a relationship with her. And Ashton, for whatever reason, thinks it'll be a good idea for them to meet up in a public restaurant because she feels like, no, Ashton feels like if they meet up in a public restaurant, Tonyo can't turn up. But oh, you already know Tonyo gonna turn up. That bitch ratchet. She, hood is in the blood. Turn up is what she do. Th that's what she do. So I don't know why you think meeting in a public restaurant is gonna make a goddamn difference. Lord, we finna see how this shit show finna go. But I, I don't see it going well. But we, we gonna see what's finna happen with that. Y'all, so... Tonio is meeting up with a family friend who also is a recording artist. His name is Benji, right? Now, before I get into what the conversation was with them, because of course she was only there talking about China. But y'all, Benji, excuse me, I had to burp, I apologize. This red wine is kicking like Van Zam. But Benji, what the fuck did Benji have on? Benji looked like he had on, first I thought he had on like a towel. Like he, you know, you get out the shower and you put a towel around you. But then he had on some black boots. Like these boots were made for walking or some old steel toe boots. And I'm like, what the fuck is he doing in a bathrobe and some um, steel toe boots? But then I seen that there was some stitching in the middle that made him kind of like some knickerbockers. So the motherfucker had on like a romper pillowcase slash terry cloth towel looking thing with some of these boots were made for walking steel toe marching band boots on y'all he looked a hot fucking mess and what was even crazy was tonio girl girl tonio just glimpsing looking at her lord she made me feel like an old woman in the head because all my mind was saying when i was looking at her was like baby what you got on Put your clothes up, baby. You're falling all out everywhere. You're spilling here and you're dipping there and you're blopping there. I mean, and then had the nerve to have some fish net, Lord. Tonio, Tonio, Tonio. Anyways, y'all, I'm, I'm getting into the fashion. That's not even what we're here for. We're here to talk about what happened on the show. Anywho, so she's sitting down talking with Benji, telling Benji about, you know, how she's supposed to be meeting up with China later on to have dinner with her. And this is the first time that they're going to be meeting up since they got into it at China's house when China threw the chair, when Tonio threw a flip-flop and shit and all this shit got crazy, whatever, right? And Benji, I like Benji because even though Benji is cool with Tonio, he's still telling her like, look, you just need to go in there calm 
relaxed. Listen to what she got to say. Already, Tony, you're starting up like, look, I'm the queen. I don't expect, I don't do no disrespect. I don't disrespect no niggas on these streets. I ain't finna let no niggas on these streets disrespect me. Bitch, we ain't talking about no niggas on the street. We talking about your child, your flesh and blood. Why is she worried about a bitch disrespecting you and a bitch better not be doing this? She ain't even talking about her like her. that's her daughter. She said he's saying a bitch this and a bitch that. Like, girl, mama, mama, mama you somebody mama. Girl, and wonder why your daughter want to have no relationship with you. But child, she as well is telling Benji that she feels like she's got a lot of yes men around her that have turned her Hollywood and basically have made her forget about who she is and where she came from. But look, this is the problem I got with that. At some point in time in your life, bitch, you got to grow up. You got to elevate. You can't be stuck and be the same person that you used to be, especially if you got a little bit of coins, okay? Because please believe, I'm born and raised Austin, Texas, two, three all day. I love my city, love my hood. But please believe, bitch, if I get a couple of commas and zeros behind my paycheck, fuck Austin. I'm moving. I'll get me a house here. I'll come back and holla at y'all. But that don't mean that I'm, I'm this and I'm that and I'm better than that. No, that just means I'm trying to grow up and I'm trying to motherfucking elevate. God damn it. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with elevating and, and, and growing and, and, and elevating your mind and your settings and all of that. Why you want to be stuck, stagnant in the same damn place? And that's what the problem is with Tony O right goddamn now. Like she said, she's going to be 50-something years old. She don't want to be out here fighting and doing all of this hood shit. But yet, still, you're going to be 50-something years old, but your mentality is still stuck like you 20-something years old. That's why you ain't never going to elevate because your mind ain't there yet. But you got to get woke. Read you a fucking book or something, bitch. Do something to elevate your mind. Because what you're doing right now, girl, it ain't even working. But Benji did let her know, like, look, you just need to calm down. Don't go in there on that rah-rah shit. Just be willing to listen to her. Listen to what she has to say. And then hopefully y'all can come to some kind of agreement. Because um, right now, you go in there like you are right now, the shit ain't going to end well. Y'all... Bless Tony your heart. That's all I can say is bless Tony your heart because until you can realize where you fuck up and stuff, you ain't never going to be right and you ain't never going to be being, um, your situations ain't never going to be right. Your relationships ain't never going to be right. And her relationship with her and her daughter ain't right because she can't realize where she fucks up and shit. Y'all, we finna see what's going to happen at this dinner. Y'all, so it's the night of the dinner, right? First, China gets there. She's there. She's sitting down. She's on her phone. Next thing you know, Tonio walks in. Tonio's like, hi, China. Greets her. Bends over. Gives her a kiss and a hug. And China just kind of like, oh, oh, hi, hi. She, she thrown off like I'm thrown off. Like, what the hell? Just okay. So she sits down. Sits down. Then proceeds to just stare at China. Like, give her this death stare. Like. China looking like, I don't know what the fuck to say. What the fuck am I supposed to do? What the fuck just happened? Who is this person? Like, what? Okay, all right. So, Tonio starts in, was like, look, okay, well, I'll talk. This is what I have to say. She, that bipolar must have kicked in on that bitch. Because she got, went to crying, got all emotional, saying, I, I've, I, I don't know what I did. Tell me what it was I did wrong. Um, girl, I had to write some of the shit down because I was just, I was dumbfounded. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. She admits that she's struggling and that she's always struggled and that she doesn't know how to communicate with her sometimes and she doesn't want to be mean to her and she doesn't want people to think that she's mean and she loves her and she apologizes and she just wants to be a part of her life and she did the best that she could as a mother and she even had me emotional. I was like, oh my God, oh, Tony, oh, no, okay, bitch, okay, maybe... Okay, girl, yeah. But then we forgot who the fuck we was dealing with. Girl, China was sitting there looking at her like. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. China wasn't falling for the shit. China was like, look, she done did this shit plenty of goddamn times before. I'm used to these goddamn fake ass crocodile tears. I already know. Like, I ain't fooling with it, bitch. You're gonna have to come with something better than that. So China got, got sick of the shit. She could tell that um, Tonya was basically full of shit and she calls her out on her shit. She's like, look, I don't like that you go on social media, you talk shit about me on social media. I don't like how you steady sin and I got these influences in my life and yada, yada, yada. It went from Tonio being emotional, showing a glimpse of being a mama and some remorse to her being like, so yeah, and I said, what does social media got to do with our relationship? And so what? What the problem is, people around you think that you're mean. You're mean. You're a fake ass person. It went, the shit went left. It went fucking left to where they arguing in the goddamn restaurant. Tony starts bringing up some shit about, no, I think it was China, brought up some shit about, you didn't want me to succeed, you don't ever want to see me succeed, and you don't want me to go to school. Tony was like, I paid for school, I'm the reason why you went to school. China's like, you didn't pay for fucking school. Tony said, I signed some papers. She said, yeah, you signed papers because I was under 21, but you didn't pay for school. Tony's like, bitch, I never said I paid for school. So you just said you paid for school. Like, they started going, it started to get... It was dumb. The reason why they started to argue became dumb because you can tell China got a bunch of bottled up shit and her bringing up school was something that she obviously has been holding on to because her mom is so fucked up. I don't, I'm sorry, but I don't, China is a product of her environment and she is a product of her fucking mother. She is the way she is because that's her mama. That's what she sees. And Tonio steady trying to call China out saying that you don't know when you wrong. You can't admit when you've done this. You can't admit when you've done that. Yet, it's still the same thing that China is complaining about against Tonio. You don't do this. You don't recognize this. You don't recognize. I mean, y'all, they both need fucking Dr. Phil. They both need Dr. Phil because I feel bad for China. I feel bad for her because with a mama like that, I've said it before. If you can't recognize where you have fucked up in a situation, where you are at fault at something, you can't expect for them to realize where you coming from. And it's like talking to a brick fucking wall. You can say to this person, I recognize where I messed up. I recognize I did this wrong. I recognize that I shouldn't have said this. I shouldn't have done that. Now, can you recognize where you said this, you did this, you done this, and they're like, no, I didn't do anything wrong. It was all you. Y'all, people like that, it's no fucking use of talking to them. You love their ass from a fucking distance, and you wish them the, the best. And obviously, I understand that's her mama, and she can't do that with her mama. It's easy to do that with other family members, speaking from my own personal fucking experience. But what I'm saying is, I feel so bad for her, because in a way, she feels like she has to have a relationship with her for the sake of her kids. But girl, no, you don't. I mean, I... I might sound cold-hearted as hell saying that, but the older I get, the more I realize it is very possible to love people from a distance. You ain't got to put up with they bullshit, regardless if that's your mama family or not. You ain't got to deal with it. Y'all, that was the end of the episode. They about to turn up in the restaurant. It's white folks and kids all around. And um, I'm going to be here for it, y'all. I feel so bad for China. I feel so bad for China. Her mama calling her all kind of bitches and hoes left and right. I was like, girl. Girl. Girl, girl, girl. But anyways, um, y'all, yeah. That was the end of the episode right there. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this review. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And I will see y'all next Sunday. Because y'all know we cut up for this review. <laughs> I will see y'all next Sunday. Peace out. Y'all have a blessed week. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.